how and why does it matter that something as simple as this perfectly adapts into all of this. Let's talk about it. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you start out on basically a deserted island with just two other animal villagers as well as Tom Nook and his sons Timmy and Tommy. And it isn't until several milestones have been reached and specifically when you unlock a residence center where Isabel, a friendly organized dog who drinks some suspiciously adult drinks in the workplace, will allow you to create your island tune, which will be the source of many interesting discoveries for us throughout this video. We need to start from the basics because it's in the simplicity that everything else is possible. To create your town tune, you speak with Isabel and ask to change it. Easy enough. There's space for 16 notes that we'll call eighth notes and play at 110 beats per minute in the editor. In addition to selecting notes, there is a rest, a hold, which just holds whatever note was last playing, and all the way at the top is a question mark, which just plays a random note in that space every time your town tune is played. If you're looking for chaos, you found it. Oh, and uh, if you put in all rests, here's what happens. And in between is basically a C major scale that extends down a fourth and up a third, but it is purely diatonic, meaning there's no way to sharp or flat any of these notes. They all fit within the C major scale. If we look at a piano keyboard, this is letting us play the white keys from this G up to this E, but there's no way to play the black keys. At first, this honestly got on my nerves because it felt like an arbitrary restriction that at best was something to make sure that if you had no musical experience, you'd at least make something that sounded you know, halfway decent. But I thought I, as a musician, would like flexibility to stretch my creative muscles. What, in Animal Crossing? <laughs> in a while, you'll see why the creators of this game were way smarter than me, and these limitations are both purposeful and beneficial. But despite its limitations, there is still some variety to be had with what are called modes. When you hear something is in C major, that's synonymous with it being in C Ionian. And something in A minor, is in A Aeolian. Major and minor are super common and very recognizable, but within this G to E an octave up, there are a couple of modes that are possible as long as we use different notes as the tonal center. Of the seven standard modes, six of them have a full octave represented here. Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, but Lydian, probably my favorite to mess around with, doesn't quite have an octave. You can still do some of the Lost Woods though, so not too big of a deal. I'm not gonna go further in depth on modes just for the sake of it, but it'll come back up a bit later. So if you wanna learn more about modes in general, check out Charles Cornell's video on modes in the description, but not, not yet. There's way more interesting things that are coming up, I promise. Point is that there's still some flexibility, even within the parameters that were given, but these rhythmic and intervallic limitations hold the key to some really neat tricks later. So there are two major categories of how this game uses your town tune, around your island and with your villagers. So let's talk around your island first and save the best and more intricate for last. And also, if you're enjoying this video, I'd love for you to like it and subscribe. This is the first of this particular kind of video that we've ever done on the channel, and its reception will be a big indicator of whether or not more of this kind will be done down the road. Thank you for helping out. Let's go. If you noticed it in the intro, you know that this is my town tune. Yep, that's All Star by Smash Mouth. I didn't set that up for the video. I just thought it was funny a year and a half ago and it stuck. So when your town tune plays across your island, the intervals, as in the relationships between notes you picked themselves, generally stays the same. But instrumentation, rhythm, tempo, and articulation all together can change a lot about a piece of music. For example, one where you may not have even noticed it's your town tune, when you walk into most doors, for example, Nook's Cranny, listen to this. Does that sound familiar? Well, let me slow it down again. That's our friends over at Smash Mouth. Oh, and I should mention the concept of MIDI real quick. Uh, in short, whereas most of the soundtrack was recorded on real, actual instruments, and that's one of the reasons it sounds so good, 
Anytime your town tune plays, it's using MIDI. It's like someone's playing it on a keyboard, but that keyboard has a lot of different sounds. So in this case, the game is playing your town tune through a sound patch of wind chimes, essentially. And most importantly in this context, chimes on a door aren't naturally a rhythmic instrument. It's just a bunch of chimes strung together and whatever order they're hidden, they make that sound. So that's why the rhythm is intentionally messed up here. And the sound of the chimes does sometimes actually change depending on what door you're opening. Like, check out the cowbell sound for the bells on Angus's door, who's a cow. The town tune also plays every hour on the hour as a clock tower bell. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's very slow and low. And the rhythm is actually consistent, just, you know, go slow. This one may take a while to notice, but when you do, you will never not hear it. So I think these are great subtle places for your town tune to play, but by far my most favorite part of the video and the thing that got me to make it in the first place lies yet ahead. How does this game use timbre, rhythm, pitch, and embellishment to make your town tune reflect the unique personalities of every character? There are over 400 different villagers that could be residents on your island and dozens of additional NPCs, many of which can play your town tune. And while some are super standard, there are others that dramatically change your tune, all to match their personality. So as I was thinking about this video, about two months ago from starting scripting, five months ago from now, a villager asked if they could leave. I thought about saying no, but then I realized if they do leave, I can meet a bunch of random villagers on deserted islands and try to extrapolate their personality just from the way that they play my town tune. And that could be, you know, really interesting. So I said yes, the villager left, and here we are. So actually, right now, I've written this far in the script, left a bunch of blanks for anywhere above that requires research and isn't from memory, and haven't booted up the game since two months ago when I let that villager leave. I haven't logged on since, because you only get one day to visit deserted islanders to choose your own new villager before one is randomly assigned to you. So that does mean that any footage you've seen already was recorded later than what you're about to see. It's, uh, it's like a time travel movie. And it's honestly not until right at this point in the script that I realized, and we're going to find out together. Well, I already found out, but you're going to find out with me in the past. Do villagers on deserted island even play your town tune? Because maybe not. And will that two months of buildup have been for completely nothing? Let's uh, find out together. Okay, let, let's go on a trip. <laughs> Villager time. All right. Here goes nothing. <laughs> nope, nothing at all. I could have logged in anytime I wanted to and it would have been fine. What a tease. Oh well, let's invite Olivia on over and uh, we'll keep going with the analysis. So like minutes after that debacle, as I started researching for this video, I found that in almost all cases, there's both music playing and your villagers talking over them singing your town tune. Honestly, this was pretty disheartening for a minute there, and I kind of thought that I wasn't going to be able to do this video at all. But I'm going to do my best to mix it so that you can hear it as well as possible. But to jump right into it, one of my villagers was super nice and used a newer feature to come over to my house right as I logged in, where I have no music playing. So here's Molly and her rendition of All Star. <laughs> Already a great example of some simple changes. An obvious characteristic here is Molly's timbre. It's something of a triangle wave, which gives it its somewhat sharp sound with some glide and a filter envelope to open and create a wah or quack kind of sound, reminiscent of the quack. duck that Molly is. So it sounds like a duck, it looks like a duck, it is quack. a duck, which reflects her species. But what about her personality? Well, her personality type is listed as normal, which is often pretty cheery. And this is represented rhythmically with some swing. We were limited to creating this tune with just eighth notes, but instead Molly's taking anywhere that we have two eighth notes and placing them as the first and third of triplet eighth notes. So a full triplet swing. And generally this has connotations of an upbeat personality. Lastly, she sings the tune in the key of E. We won't track this for everyone, but I'm noting it here for, you know, completeness. Next up in my visit, we ran into blathers. <laughs> This one is super straightforward, which I found to be true of all the permanent island NPCs, but not necessarily the ones that come and visit. It plays in the key of C and is rhythmically straight, but with a sine wave and noise generator patch that's meant to sound like an owl's 
who. Easy enough. But while in the museum, we ran into our first example that actually changes the intervals of the tune. Here's Pango, an anteater or pangolin villager who's peppy and wants to be a pop star. Here's her rendition of our song. In this case, we only hear one note that she changed. The second degree of our major scale is flatted. But I went back later and changed my town tune to a simple major scale just to see how she changes it, and that was much more enlightening. This is what's called a double harmonic major scale. You can think of it as a major scale, but with a flat two and a flat six, but it's more colloquially referred to as the Byzantine or Arabic scale. But most pertinently here, and I'm gonna butcher this, really, really bad, the Maya Malavajaula, or Bhairav Raga, a tradition of Indian classical music featuring this scale, possibly among others. And as pangolins are indigenous to India, among some other locations, this ties pango directly to that heritage. Depending on your tune, this is a huge change, so it really accentuates that this is something unique about her character. Additionally, in terms of embellishment, she also has a vibrato kind of effect, which also feels right at home in this context of the Indian music tradition, as well as considering her pop star dreams. Next up, I wanted to check out Harv's Island to see if any of the NPCs there would play my town tune, but no such luck. I skipped around a few days though and got kicks to come over to my island and his is pretty fun. He changes your tune from a major scale to its parallel minor with a whistle sound. On its own, it's nothing too exotic, but hearing your town tune change this way can either make a happy song sound a bit sad or a sad song sound different. I don't know, I didn't get to test that one out. All in all though, the straight minor scale and a whistle as well as his get up and localized vocabulary absolutely screams a classic Cockney gent. Okay, hold up, we've got a ton more examples that we could look at just for my island footage that I can't even get to all of it in this one video. But it would be so much better if we didn't do it alone. So let's go on two trips. First up, we're going to my friend Chewy's Island, who runs the YouTube channel Chewy Plays and the Animal Crossing podcast Haken and hosts on Nintendo Noise, among other things. I can only fit a sliver of these two field trips in this video, but I recorded the whole visits and I'll tell you a little bit later how you can watch those whole things if you'd like to. Let's get going. Upon arriving to Chewie's Island, he told me that he has three bear villagers, and I thought this would be a great test to compare against my one bear villager and see what multiple villagers of the same species have in common and where they differ. I'm especially curious to talk to your bear villagers. Oh, actually, before we even talk to them, what is your, your normal town tune? <laughs> it's Potatoes and Molasses from <laughs> Over the Garden Wall. Oh, potatoes and molasses. Oh, potatoes and molasses. All right, yeah, well, cool. cool. Let's listen to the the potato song. So Poncho is a bear cub with the personality type of jock. Interval or scale wise from the sample provided, everything's in order. And his particular timbre is a bit of a warmer tone that's still just a bit fuzzy, like a bear. Also, the melody is swung here, just like with Molly, which is fun because that's actually more true to the original than how it plays in the tune editor. Moving on. All right, <laughs> who's this fine fella? This is Grizzly. He's a bear villager with the cranky personality type. His timbre is pretty similar to Poncho's, but pitched slightly lower and with a bit higher cutoff, meaning it's a slightly less warm tone, probably implying his more abrasive personality. In terms of pitch, like kicks, he seems to transpose to the parallel minor. At least, using this musical example, the major third was swapped for a minor third instead. And you know what? He's a cranky villager, so it checks out. In terms of embellishment on held notes, he does an interesting pitch shift thing and just shifts up a half step and back down. I'd be interested to see what this looks like with a longer held note or if every note does it the same, but something about that choice feels almost sarcastic to me, like he's rolling his eyes. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it and it's just a fun choice, but still, neat touch. Thanks, Grizzly. Let's keep moving. We'll see if she's home. We've gotten a little lucky that we have. I was going to say, yeah, home. that's uh, that's panned out pretty well for us. Last on Chewie's Island is Megan. She's a bear, of course, with a normal personality type, just like Molly. What a jolly sound. Tone, again, is very similar. All something like a square wave, but with a lowish cutoff for some fuzz to still be left in there, but still sounding more round and warm. This time, it's pitched up quite a bit, probably because she's a female villager suggesting a higher voice. Rhythmically, it's swung again, 
Interestingly, though, none of these seem to be more or less swung than others. They all pretty much fit in a full standard triplet swing. Otherwise, that could be some additional differentiation to use if needed. Just like our other normal villager, Molly, the interval relations stay intact. All in all, pretty normal, and the only other embellishment is the nice soft vibrato on help notes. To me, this has a strong sing-songy, almost like modern, accessible musical theater vibes. In general, Megan is definitely going for the Care Bears feel, and, and it's awesome. Okay, so that's Field Trip 1 done. Uh, let's talk to our bear, regroup, and find the remaining secrets to these town tunes on our final field trip. And again, thank you so much, Chewy. Definitely check out his channel below. Okay, here he is, Groucho, and if you couldn't guess by his everything, he's also a cranky bear. And this hammers at home. Four bears in a row, and they all have a very similar tone. Again, warm and fuzzy like a bear. Groucho is harder to make out his exact scale with it being pitched lower and behind the ambient noise and animalese but it sounds like super Locrian, which out of context can be kind of unnerving sounding. And he's also got a similar vibrato to Megan on held notes, but with the no choice, it's not nearly as appealing. It fits him perfectly. All right, back to the airport to visit our bud Zeon over from Nintendo Life. You've probably already subscribed there, but there's a link below in case not. As we travel, I'll fill you in on the video I mentioned before. I recorded the entire visit with Chewy and Zeon, and I've put them up unedited on our podcast channel, youtube.com slash directly to you. And this is also where we have our Nintendo themed podcast every single week with me and AJ and sometimes guests. Links in the description. So if you're looking for a chill way to spend an hour and a half later, check it out. Actually, we have even more bonus content that I'll tell you about as we wrap up the video, but for now, we've made it to Colon. Okay, so to be honest, this trip was much less organized and much more uh, shenanigans based. There's a little character up there just creeping in the background. Do you see him? Oh, I don't have, oh. <laughs> Back to the left here. Yep. And if you tilt that camera up. <laughs> But in listening back to the villagers we talked to, whereas we've seen some interesting uses of pitch shifting before, there's a huge range of timbre across these ones, some of which are kind of perplexing. So right at the beginning, I asked Zeon what his town tune was, and he said, I think it's the song of healing from Majora's Mask. And it's just straight up not. Zeon, you done messed up. No, so it's actually, it, we found out it's the Ballad of the Windfish from Link's Awakening, his island's recurring theme. <laughs> So here's what the different villagers sound like. Okay, Cobb the Pig is pretty standard. Low pitch, pretty piggy sounding. Nothing right home about here. Similarly with Felicity the Cat. She sounds quite like a cat. Higher cut off, maybe a filter envelope to emulate a meow sound. And something similar for Olivia, who we all know now is also one of my villagers. We just invited her. She's got a little vibrato for good measure, but the timbre is very similar to Felicity's. But now we get into some more interesting ones. Dottie is a peppy rabbit, but for some reason, the sound that's used is almost like a music box or glockenspiel. I guess rabbits don't have distinct voices like some other animals, so they had to choose a sound that sounded bouncy like a rabbit. I, I don't know. I didn't have other rabbit villagers to survey, so if you have one, check yours and let me know in the comments. But this is an interesting dilemma for them of what kinds of sounds to use for animals who don't necessarily have distinct voices. And next is another cat that does sound like Felicity and Olivia, but with some extra pizzazz. <laughs> In addition to the high-pitched meowlic sound, it's also copied and pitched down two octaves. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Zeon let me know the Kit Kat, along with my favorite, Big Top, and a few others are in like the Power Rangers of Animal Crossing. So maybe that's what's being alluded to here, but I legitimately don't know. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And last, we talked to Fang, who sounds like a super standard synth bass for a techno club or something. <laughs> And with Fang representing Siberia, I guess the techno thing fits. But this actually matches the same sound as Chief on my island, who's also a cranky wolf. So I'm not actually sure if this is representative of their character background or just the wolf sound, which seems to be actually what it is. And if so, why not just a howl sound? I don't know. I'm curious. 
All right, let's head home, put together some conclusive thoughts, and I'll tell you about the other bonus video you can watch today. Zeon, thank you so much for letting me visit your island. It's been a pleasure. Okay, so we've made it back home, so let's wrap. As I'm sure you've seen, this analysis is by no means conclusive or all-encompassing. There's dozens of animal species we haven't talked to and a whole bunch of footage on my own island I didn't even get to use. But I do want to reiterate my initial mistake of thinking that the limitations to your town tune, only 16 notes, all played straight, completely diatonic, would stifle creativity when the complete opposite is actually true. The limitation allows the game to use something simple to build tremendous complexity and variation. What I wish I could have learned from this research is the exact rule set, or if there even is one, by which a villager's town tune manipulation is accomplished. What I think we can say conclusively is that there are similarities across species. For example, the bears we talked to all had similar timbres, the cats as well, even if one had a little something extra spicy. And additionally, personality types have a role in determining things like rhythm, like like how the normal villagers added some swing, or whether intervals or scales are adjusted or not. And generally, cranky villagers seem to change your scale more than a normal one might. But honestly, our most interesting example of the scale changing was Pango, who's a peppy villager. Hers changed for character background reasons rather than personality. And embellishment can change a whole lot of performance as well. For one example, here's one of my villagers we didn't see, Yuka, a really fancy koala lady. Her tune is all harpsichord with a little trill on every note. In short, I think there are general guidelines for how some commonalities are handled, whether species, personality types, or so on, but the real kicker is that every single villager's presentation of your town tune is completely unique. The variation may be subtle, like being raised a half step and adding some vibrato, but it's still unique. In the long run, I'd love to be able to see a whole table for which villagers use what scale and how that does or doesn't line up with personality type similarities, but that's not quite this video. If you'd be interested in that though, legitimately let me know in the comments below and I'll consider doing a deep dive into that whole thing. It would take a while and a lot of collaboration, but it could be done. And if you care about that kind of thing and have made it this far in this video, let me tell you about the last bonus piece of content that I mentioned earlier. Right now, as this video is going up, we're relaunching our whole channel as well as our Patreon. And AJ, the other host on this channel, has already made his video that'll go up next week, but it's already on Patreon for certain members. Oh, and in addition to AJ's video that's up on Patreon for certain tiers to be able to see, Additionally, there's an extended cut of this video, a whole section that I made for this video and then didn't make sense to be in the full cut. So we deleted it from the main video, but it's up on Patreon if you want to go watch it. And so we're thinking about doing more of that kind of thing in the future too. But yeah, go check that out on Patreon. Go subscribe. That would be great. Back to the video. There's a ton of other perks as well. We'll be talking about it more on a podcast this weekend, but that's the one I wanted to mention today. But genuinely, thanks so much for watching this video. It's been a lot of work, honestly. I would love it if you'd like the video and subscribe and stick around to watch more as we keep doing this all together. Peace and blessings.